Welcome to The Real News. I'm Eddie Conway coming to you from Baltimore. And thanks for joining me in this special segment of Rattling the Bars. I'm talking to uh, Teresa Schultz uh, about her father's recent victory in the uh, court system against the uh, Pennsylvania uh, Department of Correction in reference to solitary confinement. And this is uh, the second part of this segment. Uh, so, uh, Teresa, explain what happened in the court and, and uh, where we are today with that. Well, with the settlement, um, Daddy, uh, we knew it would be a tough fight. When Daddy wrote the book, Maroon and Implacable, I did a book tour and I met an attorney who said, we don't do that in America. We don't keep people in solitary confinement. And I told him, it, it does happen. Let me speak with you later. We spoke, and eventually Hal Engel, who was a retired lawyer with Reed and Smith, he joined the legal team uh, with the Abolitionist Law Center with Brett Grody. And they began working together, and this is how we came to this victory. Now, in this victory, uh, there is a monetary component there, but Maroon uh, has been in jail for so long, he doesn't, he doesn't care about money. So the money is, when you talked earlier about we can further the legal, um, a legal case in reference to getting him out of prison to where he's free, Maroon has already um, given the money out. One of the key factors in what we agree, none of the children, Maroon has seven children by two different women. He's still married to my mother, Thelma Schultz. The mothers are going to get a quarter each of it. And Maroon wants to set up a nonprofit organization, something like the Rosenberg Fund for Children. Uh, where Maroon will help assist family members with children who need transportation to prison. Um, the lawyers are handling all of that, so the money is really um, it's not even there. Maroon hasn't, the, the same way Maroon fought for his community and fought for prisoners in solitary confinement, when you landed on Maroon's block, although there was no personal contact, um, Maroon would yell and he would scream to new prisoners coming on the unit he was on. And he would try to tell them, keep the wheel spinning. You know, I'm going to get you a book. I'll have my daughter smell your book. A lot of those guys didn't make it. Maroon seen over 12 plus youth in their 20s kill themselves in solitary confinement at SCI Green Prison. Daddy said they would come in strolling. And he said within six months, he would see them walking like zombies. They, would, they had been medicated. Some of them he couldn't reach. But for the most part, the ones that he did reach, you could not come on his unit without taking, taking his history class. He had a history, a, a history class. Um, you would have to learn geography. And he would do this by ripping his sheet in strips. And he would attach the study list to a paper where he would poke a hole in it and tie it. And he would fish it, which the prisoners call fishing. And he would attach a, a ink pen to weigh it down. And he would fish it over to the next door. And then that person would fish it to the next person. And then they all would work, answer their questions, and then fish them all back to daddy. And a lot of those guys are out of solitary confinement and they credit their life and they they change their turnaround to Maroon. Uh, most of them have made a complete turnaround. They're in population and they're educating other prisoners. Okay. And so now what, what do you expect to happen? Okay. I understand the settlement was for like $99,000 or something like that. Uh, yeah. And you have just kind of said that he have already dispersed with it. 
Well, what do you expect to happen in the future in reference to his case? Well, the, the, he didn't get 99000 Let me make that clear. Okay. I mean, we, it's being reported as 99000 yeah. What What happened? What, what really happened? Honestly, what really happened was Maroon didn't get 99000 Maroon never, Maroon, in the last discussion, the, um, the, in the mediation thing, um, they didn't want to mediate, so the judge said y'all had to come to some agreement. But the messages, Maroon wasn't in, in front of the judge. The judge was in a separate room. Um, the defense was in one room. And and the prosecutor was in another room, and the plaintiff. They went back and forth with little pieces of paper, believe it or not, uh, with each other's comment and um, what they would do and what they wouldn't do. And finally, what we really wanted, as I said earlier, Maroon wanted to get on the stand but and testify. But what it came down to is, number one, we wanted Maroon to be evaluated, to see a psychiatrist. We wanted Maroon to never, ever be placed in solitary confinement because although solitary confinement is the buzzword now, uh, uh, some prisons are finding ways to recreate it. They're emptying out cells, solitary cells, but they're coming up with ganged um, mm -hmm. rules yes. for people. Special security units. Right. Yeah, okay. special yeah. housing units, yes. Right. And so we never want him ever, ever again to be placed in solitary confinement. Since he was so isolated all those years, he didn't want to be forced to um, be housed with another prisoner which was very fair because I'm getting so many letters from prisoners who've been released from solitary confinement, but they don't know how to live with another prisoner. Okay. And, so, and what, so okay. And with this settlement, so there was a monetary settlement, um, and he got those three things, and his attorneys were paid. Now, I, you know, when we first begin this case, I have to introduce Fred Ho, a musician out of New York, who um, directed Scientific Soul Session. Fred donated a huge lump sum of money to Daddy's legal team before dying of cancer. And so that helped get the ball rolling. Um, the money was there to, to bring on experts. Then when Reed and Smith came on board, and they um, had two of their employees, pro bono, help the Abolitionist Law Center out, uh, we couldn't lose. It was an automatic win. Mm -hmm. But what, what do you see as, as uh, going forward for his future? Well, Maru has set a president. Uh, wow. I get so emotional with this because there's a, guy, a prisoner, Chetaway, who spent more time in solitary confinement here in Pennsylvania than Maroon has. Um, there's Joseph Bowen, Jojo Bowen, who's still in solitary confinement, and they don't want to release him. The door is open now. Um, these people now, Chetaway is filing a suit against the Department of Corrections uh, here in Pennsylvania. Eventually, if they don't release Joseph Bowen from Pennsylvania Solitary Confinement Un Unit at SCI Cole Township, he will follow suit and sue as well. So, you know, once, and see, it's not about the money. It's about making these people acknowledge what they have done. I, I'm still really, uh, yes, I'm emotional, I'm happy with the win, but it's almost as if you have black men being gunned down in America, and there's no apologies, there's nothing. There's no excuse for what's going on today in America, and eventually some lawyers will approach those family members, those victims, and say, let's sue the local police department, and they'll get some kind of settlement, 
and then you don't you're on your way out of here and the next person could be murdered the same day so it's the same thing that's going on with maroon yes he's opened the door for other victims here in pennsylvania that are still in solitary confinement but we would rather have also made some kind of other impact this is a, a big impact don't get me wrong it's a win it's a win i don't care how small how big but the real issue of the injustice inside the country's prison system, the judiciary system, and everything else that goes along with this rotten system has not been addressed. Okay, tell, tell me this. What, I mean, how, I mean, obviously he's around my age. we all kind of contemporaries. Uh, how is his health, and, and how do you see going forward in terms of getting him out of there completely, not just in general population, but out of the prison oh, system? Right. How I mean, is 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 something uh, being well, done organized around that? Because that's ultimately the goal that you've been fighting for forty years for. Very much so. Very much so. We didn't see this. I didn't even see this ten years ago that we would get a a, a, a settlement like this. I didn't see it. My whole job the last ten years was to maintain his health, and boy, I did it. I was up in the faces of the um, Department of Medical here in Pennsylvania, our governors, our state representative, because I figure one day we're going to free Maroon, but I have to maintain his health. So there was a number of health issues. Even when Maroon family was released from solitary confinement, within months he, he was urinating blood, and he came down with prostate cancer. Um, uh, almost at, right after the release into population. And he survived that. He, the only thing, he's having some side effects. Um, we didn't put this out um, a month and a half ago, but Maroon has collapsed twice. Um, he hit his head. Um, he's having these dizzy spells, and we think it's because of the medication that's balancing his hormones. Um, to um, prevent the um, prostate cancer from returning. Maroon didn't tell us that he's been collapsing like this. Um, a prisoner's called us on the last, when he collapsed some weeks ago. And there was a young prisoner walking behind him, and he seen Maroon losing his footage. And he grabbed Maroon, and Maroon tried to shake him off because Maroon, you know, he just, he, he doesn't know who he's really surrounded by. And, but the young brother was trying to help him, but he collapsed anyway. We did not hear from the medical um, department there for five days. Had not a prisoner told us, we wouldn't have known. So we jumped all down their throats and um, within Maroon stayed in the hospital. They checked his heart and everything. They're saying he's okay. It may be the side effect of the medicine. So that's the stuff we have to look out for. One of the doctors told me, I said, you know, you have my family, my siblings and I, in the palm of your hands. You're squeezing the life out of us by not telling us what's going on. He said, if you do me a favor, I'll do you a favor. He said, Maroon is right here, right now. And I said, Okay, give him the phone. Uh, tell him that I'm on the phone. He, and he said, no. I said, okay, walk over to him and put the phone to his ear. And he said, no, I'm not doing any of that. You need to tell your people to back off. I said, you thought that was something? I said, that was just my siblings and I. Because we did round-the-clock calls. We, um, My sister would do at 12 noon. My brother would kick in at 3, and I kick in after 4 p.m. So Maroon is feeling better, but he's had cataract, he's had heart issues, and we're following the lead of RAP in New York. Because okay, RAP, that's, what's, what is that, agent, prisoners, what, what's, what does yeah. that stand for? I, I don't want to give you the incorrect, incorrect um, name, but... Mm -hmm. um, but more it's, for, right it's for aging prisoners that's being yes, kept across the country way yes. beyond their pro, uh, parole and probation time. 
Right. Okay. And every every state has a number of elderly prisoners, which, you know, it's a waste of taxpayer dollars. Um, these people, most likely, they don't return to prison. I mean, what more can you get out of sentence? Maroon has been in jail more than 40 years, and he's in his 70s. What more can you get out of that? So that rap is in New York, and they're coming close to freeing their elderly prisoner. So here in Philadelphia is CABI, C-A-D-B-I. And what they're do doing is um, they're doing the same kind of work. They're looking to end the life sentence. Not so much just focus on elderly, but there is a, a, a group inside a cab focusing on the elderly. But bigger than that, they're fighting to in eliminate the um, life sentence here in Pennsylvania. Well, okay, tell me this then, because we're going to have to wrap this up. What, what is it that you would like the public to do, if anything, in relationship to helping uh, Russell Maroon Schultz? I, you know, first of all, I want to thank all our supporters because although my family, my sister Sharon and my brother Russell was very dedicated to freeing my dad, we couldn't have done it without the, the support of the uh, uh, community, people on the outside, people in the movement, financially, um, the New York political prisoner dinners every year has financially helped my dad over. What we want people to do is stay focused, stay committed, stay committed. Don't give up. It, it, this, this thing is big, and they're going to keep going with this injustice, this prison system, because it's big. But this bubble isn't that big that we can't burst it. We, we're going to put out more information in reference to what our follow-through plan is. It, every month there's a um, Maroon newsletter that goes out. And the website is russellmaroonshows.wordpress.com or russellmaroonshows.com. And you'll receive the uh, monthly newsletter. There's also uh, Russell Maroon Shows Facebook where you can um, hear the updates and where we're going with this. Where we're going with this is really to release him um, uh, with the age that he has. And um, we have to really look out for, because when I look at Black Lives Matter, um, those folks um, could wind up political prisoners that are out there in the streets marching and um, supporting uh, victims of po police brutality. Daddy, Daddy says the same thing that's going on now. We were kind of skeptical, well, I was, about releasing the, the win, the settlement, because of what's going on now in the country with the five police officers being killed. And Daddy said, no, no, no. This is the right time to release my settlement because it shows that this shit is still going on 40-something years later. People are still being gunned down by the cops. Yes, release it. And this is why um, we, we released it. Um, it is a crucial time. It's, it's so crucial that, um, that Maroon is really inside. He's in an uproar about it. Because it, it's like, you know, our people can never, never catch a break. Everything we get, we have to fight for. Or someone has to die for it. And that shouldn't be. Okay, so um, we're going to probably revisit this again, and I will be back in contact with you so we can have an update uh, on where the campaign and strategy for his release is going to go. I thank you, Addie, and I'm so glad that you're home. Um, okay, and thank you for joining me. And I thank you as well. Okay, and thank you for joining this special edition of Rattling the Bars.